Good morning, everyone. This year's Nobel Peace Prize is awarded to two organizations and one individual. The individual is Alice Galatske. Uh, he is from Belarus and he has received the prize for standing up against dictatorship in his country and promoting freedom, human rights and rule of law. Um, Memorial is an organization based in Russia and have been active for more than 40 years. They have documented uh, abuse of power and human rights abuses back to the Stalinist area and up until recent time, for uh, example, the Chechen wars. Um, the Center for Civil Liberties is based in Ukraine and they have also shifted their attention to document uh, violations and war crimes in the ongoing war in Ukraine. Previously, they have also worked very hard to develop the fragile democracy in Ukraine. Now, why have these two organizations and Mr. Bialatsky uh, received the Nobel Peace Prize together? Yes, that is because they represent um, civil society, an independent voice standing up against authority and working hard and relentlessly for values that they believe in. You just heard Berit Weiss Andersen, the chairman of the Norwegian Nobel Committee, talk about this year's winners and uh, talk about why they won. Now I am going to ask Asle Toye some questions about the Nobel Peace Prize Committee. Do you have an example of how Nobel laureates have been opposed by their own governments? Well, a great many mm -hmm. Nobel Peace Prize laureates have been opposed by their own governments. But the maybe most famous one is a man called Karl von Ossietzky, who received the prize in 1936, who was tortured to death in Hitler's concentration camps. Later, in 1991, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi from Myanmar received the prize while she was imprisoned. Again, in 2010, Liu Xiaobo, uh, the Chinese dissident, was in so-called house arrest. He died in house arrest, it was really prison, uh, uh, persecuted by his own government. But only last year, uh, we saw, had uh, two uh, laureates, uh, Dmitry uh, Muratov and Maria Ressa, who are both journalists, who have both received much uh, punishment from their own governments in the year that has passed. And let's not forget this year's uh, laure laureate, Alice Bielatsky, who's a Belarusian human rights activist who's currently imprisoned and he has spent much of the past 15 years with behind bars for no other crime than speaking his mind. Um, related to Alice Bielatsky, um, he is imprisoned now, as we know, and he received the Nobel Peace Prize. How do you think the um, government is reacting to this? How do you think this will affect his sentence? Well, this is a difficult one. Uh, mm -hmm. We spent very much time discussing this in the committee mm -hmm. uh, because it's not necessarily so that the most hopeful alternative that the Belarusian government actually releases him and allows him to come to Oslo to receive the prize. Mm -hmm. They might also make his conditions harder and harsher. Uh, he's not in good health. As, uh, as it is, uh, and uh, we can only hope that uh, President Lukashenko in uh, Belarus comes to his senses and releases this prisoner of conscience so that he can come to Oslo and receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. Or at least maybe lessen his sentence by a few years? Anything would help, mm -hmm. but, uh, but as uh, the le committee leader said, uh, we hope that he will be released. Mm -hmm. At least a good part of this is that uh, it's bringing attention to him so and therefore pressure to the government. Let's hope mm -hmm. so. Uh, so I hope that everybody will keep their eyes open and, uh, and some might even be inclined to, to write to the uh, Belarusian government 
to encourage them to release uh, Alas Bielecki. He definitely does not deserve to be in prison. He's a good man. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.